This is a whiskey I'm very excited about. Try not to get jealous, because this week I'm reviewing Angel's Envy. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Matt. I'm a whiskey nerd, and this week I'm reviewing Angel's Envy. So let me get this into the glass, and I'll tell you a little bit more about it. Now, Angel's Envy is not a new whiskey, but it is a relatively new whiskey. It was founded by Lincoln Henderson, a man who is no stranger to the bourbon industry. Lincoln Henderson is kind of the brainchild, he's the master distiller behind things like Woodford Reserve or some of the more kind of eclectic special editions from Jack Daniels, such as the Gentleman Jack. And Lincoln was joined in this endeavor of starting this new distillery by his son, Wes, and lately by their grandson, Nate. So this is clearly a family that knows its way around whiskey and apparently they had this idea for Angel's Envy for quite some time. Now, what makes Angel's Envy so special? Well, it is a bourbon, but it's not legally a bourbon anymore because of what they've done. Because bourbon has all these rules about what it can and cannot be, there's actually quite a limited variety of flavors that you can get in a bourbon. And so in order to make a kind of a new or distinct whiskey, what the guys over at Angel's Envy did was they finished a bourbon in port casks to kind of bring in some extra fruitiness, some richness, maybe some cocoa notes, maybe some, maybe some nuttiness as well into the flavor profile because otherwise you're kind of more limited in what you can do with a bourbon than you are compared to like say Scottish or Irish whiskies. And I for one am pretty excited about this whiskey because I do like bourbons but I do find that sometimes they can kind of taste very similar like there's a narrow enough window in which bourbons can kind of take different flavor profiles so the introduction of a new cask will definitely add some different flavors and definitely when it's a port cask because I really do like a port cask finished whiskey. In fact one of my favorite whiskies at the moment is the Dingle Single Malt Batch 6 which spent its entire life in port casks, giving it this really nice, rich, dense, juicy berry taste. So I'm hoping some of those berry notes come through into this whiskey. Now as to what goes into the whiskey, let me give you a quick little rundown. Now I would imagine most of this whiskey is sourced maybe from multiple distilleries in Kentucky. I have seen some reports that say the core of the whiskey is sourced spirit, and that would indicate to me that maybe there's some of this whiskey in there in the blend is from their own distillery that they are making and maybe they are moving away from the sourced whiskey into the, their own distilled spirits but I haven't really been able to find any literature about that or any reports of them saying that they are moving to their own spirit. If you know for yourself let me know in the comments below because I'd love to find out more about this distillery. But they do tell us about the mash bill. This is 72% corn, 18% rye and 10% malted barley. So it should be leaning into that sweet rich corn note with a bit of the barley spiciness and then some of the kind of malty, biscuity, caramel notes rounding it out from that inclusion. It also comes in at 43.3%. So it's not as high as maybe normal American bourbons are coming in at 45% but it's not down at 40%, so it should carry some decent flavor. And lastly, it's a blend of whiskies between four and six years old that was then finished in port casks for up to six months. So there should be plenty of flavors, so it's time we go in for the nose. Oh, wow, that is different, so. Okay, it's recognizably bourbon, of course, you're gonna get that kind of classic bourbon note, you're gonna get vanilla, a bit of oak, some of those oak spices are coming through. A bit of caramel as well, maybe some maple syrup. Mm. But then underneath all that, there's this nice kind of light fruitiness. It's not a really a heavy fruitiness, but it does lean in maybe almost towards like an apple, like a kind of a, like a, not like a Granny Smith apple, not like a soft red apple, somewhere in the middle, maybe like a, like a Braeburn or like a Gala apple, something like that. Mm, I'm also getting a little bit of nuttiness. So for me on a bourbon, a pretty common note is peanuts, that kind of peanut oil, peanut brittle, that kind of note. I'm getting that here, but maybe it's not exactly a peanut. It's maybe heading somewhere towards an almond maybe a walnut, it's just a slightly, not exactly peanut, it's like been softened a little bit, and I do like that. For me, a poor cask finish often gives this nice kind of dark, deep, kind of dark cocoa note to a whiskey, but I'm not really getting that here. 
maybe a little bit, but it's maybe being covered over by those oak spices. So maybe that's going to be more apparent in the palette. So it's about time I go in for the palette. That's nice. It's definitely a little bit softer maybe than normal bourbons. Like normal bourbons, you get this kind of caramel, vanilla, sweet punch up front, and then it takes a second, and then you get the oak spice that kind of comes in right after. This is a little bit more kind of smoothed out. Like you get sweetness up front, but then you get this kind of fruitiness in like the mid palate, and at the end of the palate, you do get that oak. So it's not this up, down, up. It's more like an up, and then it fades into that spiciness. So it is quite smooth out. I think that port cast definitely does fill in a gap that I often find in bourbons. I'm definitely getting more of those apple notes and maybe maybe a hint of orange. So I'm gonna go in for a second sip and see what else I can find. Okay, yeah, definitely some apples, definitely a little bit of tangerine, uh, orange coming in towards the end. And then when the fruitiness fades off, I will get into the finish in a minute, but I do get this nice kind of oak barrel spice, a bit of cinnamon, not really clove or nutmeg, more of that cinnamon side. There isn't a huge port influence coming off this whiskey. Now I do appreciate that it is small batches. So this is bottle number 9523 on batch number nine of Y, whatever that is. But there's not a huge port influence on this. I do like that they go in for those small batches. They go in with those nice kind of lighter um, approaches to kind of make sure that each batch does have a good flavor to it. But the port influence isn't overpowering. Like this is still definitely a bourbon, even though it might technically not be legally called a bourbon, it's still recognizably a bourbon. It still has all those hallmark flavors of a bourbon without being like overpowered by the port. And I think that's a good mix. And with that being the case, I think it's time I go in for the finish and see how this performs as all those notes fade away. Okay, on the finish, I'm definitely getting that fruitiness fades away quite quickly leaves you with that nice kind of tingly oak spice but then underneath that oak spice i'm getting a kind of a berry note it's not like the cherry the blackberry those dark rich red fruits that i normally associate with a port it's almost lighter it's maybe like a blueberry you know that kind of like it has a bit of tang it's definitely a berry but it's definitely on the lighter side and i think that's where that port influence is coming in it's giving me that lighter fruity note that you don't generally get in a bourbon and then that's competing quite well with the oak spice as the rest fades away and then kind of just a general lingering sweetness it's quite a clean finish it's not overly dominated one way or the other it's got this nice bit of berryness it's got this nice bit of oak it's got this bit of sweetness underneath everything but it's not dominated one way or the other i think that's quite nice it's quite enjoyable it does only come in at 43.3 percent alcohol so i wouldn't expect it to have this huge showstopper of a finish. It's just a nice, clean, enjoyable finish. This is a whiskey that I was quite excited to try because I can get it in Ireland, but it is about two, maybe two and a half times the price as it is over in America. So because my better half is from America, I decided to hold on until we were over in Chicago and I picked up a bottle and I'm glad I got it because it's a nice whiskey. If I had paid 100 euro, 120 euro for it, I don't think I'd have been as happy, but coming in at like $45, I think paid for this, very nice, very reasonable, and very enjoyable whiskey, so I'm definitely glad I got it. And as for whether you'd like it, I mean, it's a bourbon, classic, it's a good bourbon, it's nice, it's rich, it's sweet, but it does have this extra dimension to it. I mean, if you are a bourbon drinker, chances are you've tasted a lot of what bourbon is capable of, and moving into something like this has been finished, it's definitely a good step forward to see what else you can do. There's other companies on the market, I know Barrel are doing a few. I think Elijah Craig have a few different uh, barrel finishes. But as far as I'm aware, Angel's Envy were, if not the first, they were one of the first whiskey companies to come out with a line of finished whiskies. And I think that's adding a lot to what bourbon can do. So if you want to explore what bourbon can do and you haven't yet tried Angel's Envy, I definitely say give it a go. And as for me, I'm going to keep on enjoying this and I will see you next time. I put out whiskey reviews every Wednesday and cocktail recipes every Friday. So if you want to see more, scroll down, hit that thumbs up button, hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you again. Sláinte.